What's up guys? So let's go over the Ice Shard Sorcerers and watch this little intro clip here. So I'm just going to be pressing my Frost Nova, not even attacking. You can see just things just pop off the screen and I mean it attacks incredibly, incredibly fast. So Season 4, why would you want to play the Ice Shard Sorcerers? Well, there have been some newer updates that actually makes this build quite good. So for starters over here, the Ice Heart Brayers are excellent, excellent unique pants that you can add into this build. They are optional, but I would highly recommend them especially if you want to take this build a little bit more seriously and start pushing into the higher pit runs so for starters the most important thing that i have to go over at the start is the ice shard enchantment so the ice shard enchantment makes it so ice shards automatically conjure and fly towards frozen enemies with the new ability to temper on our pieces of gear what we're able to do is actually have frost nova size as well as a chance to instantly freeze targets allowing the enchantment to automatically just shoot ice shards which increases your dps now, on top of that, we also have the ability to temper on our piece of gear to make Frost Nova bigger so it'll start freezing more enemies. So th those are like the main changes here that would give you bonuses uh, for this to kind of proc more often. And what is really nice with the unique power is just it's enemies that die while frozen have a chance to unleash another Frost Nova. Now, what's really cool with this is this is not a lucky hit chance. It is just straight up 30% when they die, this happens, which is really awesome. Obviously, it doesn't really work super well against bosses, but if there are a set of different like small things that spawn in on the boss and they die, they release the Frost Nova, it still will build up that stagger bar. And just like with any sorcerer's build, uh, staggering is quite nice to have uh, just being able to shoot at the target because a lot of the bonus damage that you get with sorceress is versus crowd controlled versus like frozen sort of things. Anyway, so it just helps build the stagger bar a little faster. There's another change with uh, Mystical Ice Armor that does give you more damage and applies some chill, and this essentially gives you more damage with the build uh, because things will be frozen, so you get another multiplier over here of like uh, 20, uh, it chills close to enemies for 20%, and then 15x increased damage to frozen enemies, and the Shivering Frost Nova actually gives you an insane amount of stats here. So. If you use Frost Nova, you get 3% dodge per enemy hit up to 15%. But if you hit a boss, it just gives you that maximum amount. So that's 15%. If you've ever tempered or rolled pieces of gear, you get about 5-ish percent depending on what piece it's on. But this is actually quite good. This is almost like three, two to three rolls depending on what it is uh, as far as like dodge chance. This is actually great. And on top of that, you get to keep that effect for 8 seconds and you get to have the ability to gain extra resources. Although most of the time you'll have like maybe some chance to restore primary resource on a, some sort of like lucky hit or something, but this will also give you some extra mana if you do happen to dodge. And if you do want to run like Melted Heart of Selig, so you take your resources damage and then it regenerates because you can run a lot of aspects that will give you dodge. You can maybe do some really cool combos with this. Uh, however, this is kind of my earlier introduction into the build. As I was messing around with it, this is like early, early stuff over here. Uh, and and a lot of people are like, dude, I want this build, so here it is for you guys. Now, I want to start off the video by saying, at the moment, if you're wondering, is this build better than Frozen Orb? Frozen Orb still holds one of like the top tier spots as far as a Cold Sork, and I already have that build video, and I will link it down below. Blizzard is also a pretty good choice if you are interested in maybe doing some of the bosses. Blizzard definitely feels much better, but there's kind of give and takes with all of them. This one, I want to say, is definitely superior for being able to clear out content, and the reason why is because once one thing is frozen, that thing thing may just pop and it'll freeze another thing and it's just really satisfying so there are some give and takes with all the different builds i suggest just trying them out and seeing which one you like although i'll probably update you guys later with another like final build over here i didn't have any crazy master working but obviously you would want a master work to get the uh weapons to actually have those chance for ice shard projectiles to cast twice giving you way way more dps so that's essentially kind of what's new with this build but almost every single build will have some sort of tempering that will increase your damage or give it the ability for it to like activate twice so let's go over the skills and some of the optional things that you can run and like i said you can push way way higher into the pit this is just like my early gameplay again no master working here in terms of getting like some of the stuff that you absolutely want which you would want the uh, ice shard projectiles to cast multiple times so as far as the first skill you'll see i put unstable currents although you can play pretty much anything in this category so uh, on the skill tree you'll see that like i didn't put it in here but it's kind of like a free open spot you can put whatever you want if you want to run the ice blades because i was trying out like if i can just squeeze out another aspect instead of running a cursed touch so i don't have to rely on the frost nova because with sorceress that's kind of like your only good source of vulnerability unfortunately with the ice blades i mean you're not going to be hitting everything all at once with them so you need some source of vulnerability and i really like the cursed touch but that was like another thing i was testing out but 
Basically, you do need to apply vulnerability in some sort of way. I opted for a cursed touch, but you can also run unstable currents to get you a massive amount of uh, extra bonus attacks, but it gives you 25% and that breaks the cap in the game as this build can easily achieve 100% attack speed because we run one of the best uh, passives in the game that still works with all the damage, uh, but nonetheless, uh, yeah, unstable currents is optional. You can run ice blades, you can run anything in this first slot, whatever you want to mess around with. And then obviously it's an ice shards sorceress, so you need to play ice shards. And on top of that, we've got the Flame Shield as well as the Ice Armor. And Ice Armor, remember, you can activate it to get increased damage. And then we have Frost Nova, which essentially can proc for free or just push the button yourself. And then we're also running Teleport here. And then for the enchantments, you have to run Ice Shards. If you want to, run Fire Bolt, that's fine. Again, if you don't want to run this, that's fine too, but you really have to run this for Ice Shards. There's no reason why you wouldn't. But the main thing is it's just the Ice Nova is just so incredibly good in this season. Because again, if things are frozen, you're basically getting a huge amount of extra bonus survivability. So uh, as far as the uh, aspects, uh, let's go ahead and go over those. So you can run Everliving, that one is excellent. If you want to run Juggernauts, fine. You can also get a greater affix plus rolled armor, roll one of the stats to have like defensive armor, and then you can run another aspect if you want to here. And then uh, Piercing Cold, you do need this for the Ice Shards to pierce multiple times. They do less damage when they pierce, but uh, it won't really matter too much because everything's just going to be frozen and then you'll start shooting out more. You can see the clear speed in terms of the trash over here. I, I forgot what number was uh, this one over here. This one is a 45. Again, you can go way, way, way higher with this, especially if you start masterworking because that is actually a pretty big stat to actually increase for any build uh but yeah this just makes your clear speed so much better to have the ice shards pierce because ice shards actually does really good damage and in fact it does even more damage when the target is frozen that actually got a small little buff here and uh well it's gonna be able to start freezing things earlier even if it doesn't instantly do that huge damage because the pierced ones do less damage when you're shooting out extra you really don't notice it and then ice heart brayos this one is optional but it definitely if you want to push with this build you definitely want to get it don't worry it's a very very easy unique heck people will give these away i've gotten so many uh that i had extras up and we also run the aspect of slaughter this one's uh, optional you can run the one that gives you the ability to do days and then you get even more damage on the smaller enemies but like once you stagger the boss i mean you just get to fire like a machine gun it is so fast i mean look at that attack speed on it it's crazy um but then we're running a salary aspect that's how we get the crazy amounts of attack speed and then uh we're also running elementals aspect you guys know i love this thing on the sorceress especially because i don't have to have my amulet slot filled with the fractured winter glass because we don't need it for the ice shard sorceress so when you use your core mastery skill on an and you have this on the amulet, you get 60% crit. That's how, look at my numbers. It's like 99%. There's some other maybe numbers that are like proccing when I'm like activating some other skills. But for the most part, it is really, really realistic to get 100% crit. And the reason why is just alone with this, you get 60% on your amulet. It's granted, you have a good rolled one. So you get 60% here. And then on average, you're going to get like anywhere from 5 to 10%, which is with your paragon and just because you have the dexterity. And then you'll get 5% base. And that means you only really need to get like 30-ish percent crit which you can get on your gloves and your rings and then you can also get it on your offhand so it's very realistic to actually achieve 100 crit in this build and then we have a cursed touch here this is optional you can also run lucky hit chance to make enemies vulnerable but you need some sort of vulnerability because you cannot just rely on the frost nova especially on the bosses it's just much better to be able to have 100 uptime then just like every single sorceress build you need the tal rasha ring and then for the offhand you could do crit you know re resource cost reduction chance to restore primary source but the only thing that's really important is the chance for ice shard projectiles to cast twice that's really it as far as the other things go i'll mouse over them but you can get like mana per second in your helmet your chest piece as well as in your boots and then you'll usually have pretty good mana solve problems because over on your skill tree you also have extra mana when you run frigid uh, breeze so this is going to make it so cold damage against vulnerable enemies has a chance to generate mana and this build fires just incredibly incredibly fast i mean the attack speed can go way over 100 percent so uh the things that go and break the cap in the game are going to be either unstable currents or you can run uh, accelerating these can increase your attack speed and you can go way further there's actually only one other way that i think i can think of that breaks the attack speed it's only for pyromancies on a uh, cast but yeah these do break the attack speed caps in the game so you can go over 100 percent attack speed which is something that we talked about back when we were playing ball lightning 
So keep in mind, you don't want to get so much attack speed that is in like category one. Just basically, don't try to think that you need to get even more attack speed because pretty much with accelerating some attack speed here, you get attack speed in your ring, you should be pretty much good to go, but don't go past 100 unless you're counting accelerating and unstable because they're in separate categories. Uh, but anyways, as far as the gems go, emeralds, once your crit is about 80%, emeralds just become better. And then you run rubies as well as diamonds, kind of like the go-to. If you do want more damage and you want to go for pushing, yeah, then you want to go ahead and run topazes for even more damage. As far as the skill tree goes, so it's pretty standard here. You don't really, doesn't matter for the first one other than putting one point into firebolt because you need that for your enchant if you decide to run that. Then obviously ice shards. So uh, this makes it so while you have a barrier active, ice shards always receive its bonuses against frozen enemies over here. So it can actually ricochet uh, and it's really good. Uh, again, you're going to get so much clear speed with this. This is why I love this build so much. And then we get extra mana because we need it for the elementalist aspect. So once we're above 100 mana, uh, you could also pop a potion to make it quite easy, but resource cost reduction also helps out with that. And then you can do more damage when you're above 50, but this is real easy to hit with this build. I mean, look at my mana. when I'm As long as I'm hitting something, okay? Don't think that you're going to have infinite mana when you're shooting into a wall. You have to hit targets in order for certain uh, things to actually activate. Um, glass cannon is optional. If you're too squishy, then don't put points in this. I like this uh, in, as far as elemental tombment. One point in here is good. And then again, shimmering as well as the mystical. These are brand new to season four, which makes this build a lot better. And then you have like, if you have more points, you can put it into the uh, lucky hit if you want over here. And then I really like mana shield and protection just for extra survivability. And then I like this one also, snap freeze. Remember against frozen targets, you do way more damage and the novas are gonna activate and it's more survivability more damage because the targets are going to be frozen you shoot out stuff and then because we are running the uh, ability to have all of our abilities just apply the burn we have the devouring blaze that is because we have the enchantment firebolt so that's really good for that and then coming down over here we get all of the cold ones so horror frost frigid breeze ice touch permafrost all of them get them all and then here's where it becomes interesting because i really hated uh running avalanche but there really wasn't really a good option i know viewers mastery is still bugged and it kind of can still proc apparently off of things that aren't really supposed to make it proc but i wasn't really interested in shatter as well i feel like you do enough like clear speed damage it's just the bossing that i really didn't like so as ferocity it does require you to run in the uh Itemization, you do need to run the aspect called the Ancient Flame, which is going to make it so you're going to get 50% attack speed. There's really nothing else that's giving that that like stat. You used to not really need it because you could just roll attack speed on your weapon as well as your offhand, but they had since nerfed that, so that gives you so much extra damage. It is by far a long shot the best, but if you want to run Shatter, that's that's fine, or Avalanche, uh, that's fine. Just don't run this one. This is like the only one that you won't really get value out of, or Overflowing Energy. Unless you want to do the Crackling Energy and try to reset your ulti, it's still really not worth it in most circumstances, though. So now that we've gone over the skill tree, let's go ahead and go over the Paragon board. So as far as the Paragon board goes, uh, we are going to be starting out, with, obviously, on the starter board. So we're going to throw an Elementalist, and then we throw out Unleash, so we get extra mana regen, more damage. Then we run Control. We need to run Control here. We don't grab this, uh, but Elemental Summoner and Control here. Uh, and that's going to give you more damage against the uh, crowd control targets. And then we want to pick up these mana nodes. It's just one of the best boards to go ahead and pick up some mana nodes. And then after Elemental Summoner, the order does matter. We're going to go up to Icefall Winter. This is one of the best things in the game. You get an insane amount of damage reduction as well as damage to chilled enemies. You might, the number might not match up over here, but if you need to get extra willpower for whatever reason, that's totally fine. But uh, keep in mind that some of the stats, when you get a certain bonus, it may not show it in every uh, one of the builders, but if you need to remove a point into int or something, or remove like a, a life point, just because you need to fit that, uh, there are some uniques that can give you all stats, like hollow compress can give you all stats. Uh, it is totally a-okay, but make sure you do hit this bonus of this one. Again, some of the ones where it's like, it gives you bonus to like the other nodes over here may not calculate correctly again in all the planners, but it should be good to go. Uh, but Again, if you need to put one, it's literally one point. So uh, you want to pick up Icefall over here, and then you want to get Winter. This is uh, in the Icefall Winter. And then you want to go to Frigid Fate and Destruction over here, because you get a lot of cold damage. And then for the last board, it really doesn't matter uh, what the board is, because we've gone through all the cold ones, all the good ones. Uh, the other ones are either like bonus to lightning damage or bonus to fire, and we don't use that. So it doesn't really matter what the last board is. Just throw it to exploit as long as it happens to have the one with the... Uh, correct notes this one just kind of pathed out to be okay but again the last board really doesn't matter which one you decide to choose but that's going to be the ice shard sorcerers really really cool build in fact i i think we just did some um 
pit. But for the most part, like, this build is so dang good for just clearing out stuff in the Helltide. You can even pop, like, the brain. I mean, the, the pops just go crazy. And the one thing that I do want to say that this build would offer, if you're playing in a group uh, with Frozen Orb Sorceress, oh man, this is just an excellent build because everything's constantly frozen. So you're freezing things left and right which is really really good and then on top of that uh it helps out other people because uh if the things are frozen it lets everyone kind of kill things much faster especially if you could play this in a group with like a necromancer and he sucks up all the things and you get one big pop and they start freezing everything it's great uh, i love this build it's probably one of my favorite builds and a lot of you guys have came and asked what's my favorite build this season for the sorceress and by a long shot i honestly really really liked this one it was one of the best builds in the game in season uh, like zero and season one people really loved the ice shard sorceress and i, I think it's really great so if you are playing like the frozen orb build then you kind of maybe want to swap to something else it's a very easy swap it's just to mix it up uh but in terms of push uh, I haven't really seen anyone really push with this, uh, but I don't think it's bad at all. It has some huge potential for boss damage, and that is because uh, the amount of damage that you get on just the raw ice shards is actually quite insane, and the clutter of the screen with all the stuff with the frozen orbs exploding really makes it a little bit difficult for certain boss fights to go on, but it's a fun build. Anyways, that's it. If you guys enjoyed the video, drop a like on it. If you're new here and you want to see more builds, hit subscribe, turn the bell. You'll definitely see more. I'll catch you guys in the next one. And also in the pin, it'll have all the timestamps for everything that you would need, as well as the build guide.